Nine. So my game is a card game where you are building a deck by collecting more body parts and adding them to your um, to your to your deck, basically to your body. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to add sound either. Um, I can't remember. I think there may have been one other game where I never got around to adding sound or or very minimal sounds, which is very disappointing because making sounds is one of my favorite part of uh, of Let Him Dare, but we just did not have the time. Now, sometimes when I run out of time, I say, oh, it's because I tried to do too many things. I tried to add too many features. With this game here, I'm not sure that anything could have been cut out. Actually, I'm going to do a proper game capture here just to make sure that it's grabbing it correctly. I honestly am like, uh, why is it not showing? There we go. I think it's one of those where everything that is in here sort of kind of has to be in here. And I don't think we could have done without anything. And I think it was just by virtue of the fact that um, card games are a very large, big scope kind of project. Maybe they're not the sort of thing to do in a 48-hour compo. Uh, certainly in the 72-hour we would have been just laughing because I would have liked a little bit more enemy variety and certainly sound effects. Other than that, we're pretty good. There's a couple of dialogue boxes that never got another art pass, which is too bad because they sort of stand out a little bit in terms of crappiness. But um, but mostly, I'm very happy with how this turned out. In particular, the thing I'm most happy about is this title screen, which this is like I was putting in a shader effect, and this isn't exactly what I was going for when I was, I was putting it in. I was just sort of typing in some stuff, and then at some point, this started to happen with the clouds. I was like... Oh, this is really good. I'm going to keep this here. Dr. Deckenstein, an adventure in severed parts. Click to begin. So very, I tried to go with a very minimalistic intro to the game. Uh, this is a card. Endurance cost down here. Attack damage over here. No explanation giving for what that is yet. This is a monster. This is its attack. This is its health. Okay. All right. That's fine. And then a little bit of something to set the tone for the game. Kill monsters, loot body parts, attach them to your body. Done. And then it drops you into the game itself. Select an encounter. This is one of, uh, I believe, two dialogue boxes where I hadn't redone the art for the dialogue itself. Um, it actually would have been pretty easy to do because we actually had a blank card that was already nine sliced for it, uh, but just trying to rush desperately at the end there to get everything wrapped up. So select an encounter. You move deeper into the dungeon. Which way do you turn? Well, we only have one option first. Uh, which, you know, I would have preferred maybe putting in slightly different text over here uh, to, imp to indicate that, like, no, no, there's only supposed to be one here, and it is. It's going to start you off a little bit slowly. We get an orc party. You kick open the door and see three orcs drinking tea. They are upset at the interruption. Click that, and this is the main combat screen. We got a little pop-up here because we have a quick action card, which I hadn't introduced during the, the, the intro tutorial. I wanted to keep it as bare and simple as possible. You have a quick action. Playing this will not end your turn. So we can click to dismiss this, and so we can see our cards down here. The other thing I think I would have liked is when you mouse over a card, I think I would have liked a little bit of motion to give you a little bit of feedback that you were doing that. But, you know, all's fair, all's well, as is. Um... We've got, you know, sort of a cave-like kind of area. We've got the saw blade over here. We've got our deck over here and a discard pile over here. Little counts above each. It would have been nice maybe if the the v visual of these piles changed based on how many cards were in there. But that would have definitely, you know, again, time budget. Uh, but these are really little things, not, not anything I'm really terribly bothered by. So we've got a set of cards over here, um, and we've got a set of monsters here. These are orcs that do two damage, and they have two hit points. So right away we can see that we could use a punch to kill one of these orcs, and that's indeed happens, and then the orcs take a turn. Although, regular orcs have a 50-50 chance of not attacking, so they only attack some of the time. It's supposed to be a really gentle encounter to get used to the um, to the mechanics. And um, from, the, I gotta thank uh, Elf Siren for doing a stream not long after Let Him Dare ended. Uh, he and his significant other, uh, Court, were playing this game, and it was really interesting uh, to see Court, who, who sat down first, who apparently hadn't really watched any of the, uh, the development stream. Of course, live streamed the whole thing, and, uh, but had listened to some of it. But just being able to intuitively figure out how to play, right? Grab a card, punch Orc. Done. I, I was so happy to see that because it meant that clearly I did something vaguely right in the user interface, or at least the user sort of um, experience or usability of the program. It, it's pretty obvious what's going on there. Um, well, I got really lucky on this one. The orcs haven't attacked once again. It is it is quite random. I have a need to use the cup of tea. The cup of tea, though, is the example of the quick action. So I could use that. It would give me plus two endurance, except I'm already capped on my endurance, so nothing to worry about there. We could draw more cards. Worth noting, strategize 
is not a quick action, so it does end your turn. This is a good one if you've if you burn through a lot of cards in your hand for, for example, quick actions. You don't really have a move to do this turn. You can just use the strategize to get some more stuff. That would be fine. Um, Headbutt does use endurance. We'll use it here because it doesn't matter. Uh, because at the end of the battle, your endurance does pop up to the top. Then you get loot. The loot is not tied into what monster you have faced. Um, it is randomly generated. This is the other dialogue box that didn't get um, restyled, which is too bad, especially the buttons. Really quite, it kind of look like ass compared to the rest of the game. But it is functional. Everything does work. So Angel Wings is an epic body part. If you play this and it's a quick action, you can't be hit by melee for one turn. So you basically fly up above the battle over here. It costs two endurance to play, but it can dramatically reduce the amount of damage you take in. Additionally to that, your other option is to discard a wound instead. Now, um, this is not case sensitive over here. The, the description here and the description on this button are, are, are sensitive to... Uh, what kind of card because there's body parts and there's tools you can find as well uh, but this isn't here we don't have a wound so it'd be nice if the other button just said or gain plus one max endurance not clear here but it's maximum endurance goes up by one we'll take the angel wings um because i do like quick actions uh and it probably will be helpful later on especially if we get to the final boss so now we're going to fight an orc patrol the fact that they don't seem to surprise to see you makes you a little nervous uh so same maneuvers, we didn't draw the Angel Wings, that's okay, we can live without it. We've got two more normal Orcs, we also got an Orc Shaman this time. The Orc Shaman uh, will heal their allies. Every other turn they heal for one hit point, and then the other, the opposite turn they attack. Um, so I think here what probably is the best way to start, oh we drew our block, which is great. This is a quick action, take no damage from one attack. So the very first attack, and you get a little shield here, very first attack you take will be automatically reduced down to zero, which is great. Uh, I think I'm going to focus on punching out the two side orcs first, just to reduce the incoming damage. So I'll kill you, get attacked by the shaman, get attacked by the orc. The shaman got blocked, and this is actually the first time all game we, we took a hit of endurance, so we're getting our first uh, little contextual pop-up over here for the endurance. Um, if you run out of endurance, you will be wounded. We don't know what a wound is yet, but I'm, I'm trying not to overload the user with too many explanations. Uh, we drew another punch, so I'll go ahead and take out this orc as well. Could have drank my cup of tea as well, but that's okay. Orc Shaman just did his healing move. He would heal everyone for one point of damage. Only one person left, and he wasn't damaged, so it didn't really do anything. Um, I, you know, I could put in more logic for their behavior, but I wanted the enemies to be very sort of predictable. Um, the There's necromancers we're going to face later on that do do actions sort of contextually based on uh, what, what's going on on the monster side, but that's about it. Uh, may as well cup of tea now, bring my endurance back all the way up, and I'm going to go ahead and punch the Orc Shaman. He's going to attack me this turn, and oh, we can finish him off with a headbutt. Wonderful. Found some old medical supplies, bandages. Bandages is a card that does, it's not a quick action, but at least it lets you draw a card first, and then it lets you destroy a wound card from your hand. Destroy, not discard. It's actually quite hard to destroy wound cards. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to not take it and just get plus one endurance. Uh, you, you only get a wound when you run out of endurance, so having a little bit more to your max is actually really, really handy. Um, but it's very hard to get rid of wounds, so it's it like might be nice to preemptively take the bandages. I think I'm going to discard it, or, or take the option, I'm going to throw away the bandages and get plus one to max endurance instead. So we could fight another orc patrol, or we could fight an orc press gang. Um, and for the sake of making variety, I'm going to fight the Orc Press Gang this time. Looking for new recruits or people they can feed to new recruits. We are going to face three Orc Underbosses here. They do two damage and have four hit points. And unlike normal Orcs, these guys do attack every single round. So you can find yourself getting overwhelmed quite quickly. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with the Angel Wings here. Cost me two endurance to play. And you can see it did that. But I'm now flying, so melee enemies, which these guys all are, can't hit me. So it cost me two, which is the same as one hit, but I'm going to avoid four other points of damage. So that's a pretty good win. Uh, well, actually, I'm only going to sort of avoid two points because I'm, oh yeah, I can't kill them in one shot. I could have gone for the stun, but it'd be silly to stun them on this turn since they can't hit me anyway. And I think killing one's as good as stunning one, so I'm just going to finish that guy off with a punch. Uh, we're going to get a cup of tea, drink up there. Um, and what I'm going to do, now I, I'm, I'm Sort of, if I can draw a headbutt, which does three damage, and one of these two cards is a headbutt because we haven't drawn one yet, trip into headbutt would be great because trip does do one point of damage. On the other hand, if we draw another punch, well, I guess all my punches are in a discard pile at this point probably because I think you start with three. Because if I, if I went trip and then I just drew a punch, then I would feel kind of foolish. But I think I'm going to go trip, 
with the expectation I'll probably be drawing a headbutt. No, it was my blocks. The headbutt's the last card in there. Well, that's okay. I will block, so at least I'll take one less action. We're still going to be fine. I'm going to punch the other guy here. And now we should be drawing the headbutt. And we are. So I can use that to finish this guy off. And next turn, my deck will refresh itself. Oh, I got the headbutt again. All right, we'll finish that off. And we still haven't taken a wound. Phoenix Feathers. Wow, the game is really trying to get me cards to remove all wounds. Um... And this is destroyed after use, because it destroys all wound cards in your hand. And it's a quick action, so the, the bandage destroys only one, and is destroyed after use. Phoenix Feathers will destroy, well, two is really the most it can ever destroy. Um, it doesn't draw a card first, but it is a quick action. I think I'm still going to go ahead and just discard this. This is going to be a tough run. We're not getting super powerful cards here. Uh, the Angel Wings are good. Okay, so now we're getting Necrocancy. So we've got a normal orc and a necromancer over here. And the necromancer gets lonely if he doesn't have enough friends. The way he works, and it, it's interesting, to um, again, to have watched that stream and see people sort of figure this out on the fly. The way he works is, if there are fewer than three enemies, he summons a skeleton. Um, so I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and block. And I think I'm going to trip him to stop him from summoning a skeleton this turn. And we'll see you know, what else we can do to build up. Orc didn't attack. I still have my block over here. Okay, I'm going to have to just punch the Necromancer now. So he's going to summon a Skeleton. Which... Right! Oh! Used to attack on the first turn, but actually made a change. There was um there was one bug that we ran into. If an, There's uh, cards that you can have that basically almost give you, well, like a Thorns effect, where if someone hits you, they take damage back. If an enemy died from doing that, there was a a combination of stuff that could happen that could hang the game. So I put in a fix, which you're allowed, like um, game-breaking bugs like that, you can uh, you can upload a fix to on Let Em There even after the, 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 the submission time. So I did that, but it had the unintended consequence of making the skeletons there summoned not attack instantly, which honestly I think is actually better. So it's a little bit less, like, surprising what's going on here. Uh, so, I mean, there's no reason to kill the orc or the skeleton because the necromancer is going to summon someone else. So we're just going to go ahead and punch out the necromancer here. Orc doesn't attack. Skeleton will attack. We only attacks for one. Uh, we will punch out, I suppose, the orc because if he does attack me, he'll do more. Of course, we have one at this point, which is fine. And we'll just finish him off there. No reason to use the cup of tea. Uh, orc teeth. Excellent little item. It is just a common body part, but... It's basically a punch that does three damage instead of just two. I'm definitely going to add that to my group. Um, we're going to fight, um, I don't know, I think another Necroarchancy. I think that's going to be perfectly fine for us. Uh, so we'll go, I think, block, and then I'll headbutt the Necromancer. And then I can just kill him with a punch in the next turn. So he just got summoned the Skeleton. We'll punch him. I should have the little flavor text for the Necromancer saying what he did. Um, and I think we can just go punch, punch. These are really a relatively easy fights still. The idea is to get these guys, these fights to get you some more stuff. Oh, Sharp Claws is quite good. Um, it does two damage to all enemies on the screen. It does cost you two endurance, but that's a lot of damage. Just a six damage attack, basically. All right, we're going to face, face an Orc Patrol. We've seen this before. Double Orc plus the Orc Shaman. If I had drawn the, uh, the, the swipe first, then I would actually be able to kill two Orcs in one go here. Um... I think I'm just going to throw down a block and then go ahead and knock out one of the orcs right away. Reduce the incoming damage a bit. No need to angel wings here, I think. I'm going to go ahead and I'll cup a tea to bring myself back up. And I'll just headbutt the other orc. The orc shaman will heal uselessly. Excellent. Feel smart when you do that. It's not. I don't see it as a failure of the AI. I see it as a way to make the player feel smart because they have used that correctly. Adrenal Extract is awesome. So this adds plus one damage to a card in your hand. It is not a quick action, so you, you will spend a whole turn doing it. So you want to use it at the right time um, so that you're not taking too much damage. But it permanently buffs a card in your hand to have plus one damage, which is cool. All right, here's the orc boss fight. You're pretty sure this is how you get l good loot. So we've got a regular orc over here. We've got a Shaman. We also have an Orc Commander, which in addition to having six point, hit, hit points, which is a lot, does four freaking points of damage. And every other round, he's going to be healed by one from the Orc Shaman. So how do we start? Well, here's the thing. One nice thing with block is the enemies always attack from left to right. So if I use the block, the first enemy to attack me is going to trigger the block. If I can block and kill this Orc, then it's going to block the damage from the Orc Commander, which is nice. And I can actually do that pretty easily by going block, followed by that Sharp Claws, which is going to hit all of them and kill the basic orc. We block the orc commander's attack. We take two damage from the shaman. The shaman's going to heal two on the next turn here. Uh, we're going we're gonna to cup a tea. 
Um, I think the right thing to do is to, or the Arc Shaman is going to heal each one of them by one, is what I'm going to say. I'm going to, I'm going to finish off the Arc Shaman. Means I'm, I'm going to take the damage from the Orc Commander, but at least he won't get healed up. Uh, a trip I like quite a bit. Only does one point of damage, but stuns him for a turn. And Angel Wings cost me two endurance, but it's going to block four damage, so it's a net gain. So we're going to Angel Wings into Punch. And I did draw damage. Good. Needed to draw some more damage on the next one. I still had to strategize if I didn't, so I wouldn't have been... I mean, I wouldn't have done anything that turn, but at least I'd, I'd be digging pretty aggressively. Ooh, Octopus Tentacles. Love this. So basically, it's a three damage punch that costs no endurance, right? Zero endurance, three damage. But while it's in your hand, your hand limit is increased, which is quite cool. It, it's not going to help. It's only while it's in your hand. So it doesn't help on your initial draw, but if you do play cards that draw you extra cards, you can go above your limit and be comfortable. If anything else, it's still a three damage attack that costs you no endurance, and it is pretty decent. But we are we don't have any powerhouse cards here. Okay, we drew... Oh, this is a tough fight. Triple Commander. This is brutal. Um, we drew Adrenal Extract, which we're going to really like to use, but again, it uses up a turn. Um, so... Angel Wings, I'm really happy here, because this is blocking 12 damage for a cost of 2. So we're going to Angel Wings, so these guys can't hit me. Then um, I'm going to start just beating down on these guys. I'm going to use the Orc Teeth on the guy on the left. So none of them are going to hit me because of the Angel Wings. This is actually working out quite good. Oh, and I drew the Octopus Tentacle, which, again, so your hand limit goes up while it's there, which is kind of cool, but what I'm really excited for is that it's a 3 damage attack, uh, ignoring even the fact that it's free. The fact that it's 3 means we can kill this Orc Commander. I like it. Okay, so we're taking eight. If we take eight again, and we are going to, unfortunately, we're going to take our first wound because our endurance will drop below zero here. Um, well, I got to just keep applying the damage. So I'm going to hit the Orc Commander. Boom, there's our first wound. We got Shin Splints. And now you can see what the loss condition of the game is. You lose if you have three wounds in your hand. So if you have two in your hand already, and then you take another wound, it's just GG right away. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to keep punching the Orc Commander here. We're going to take another 8 damage, which is really rough. Okay, Cup of Tea is good. Um, I think I'm still going to just punch this Orc Commander. Yep, that seems fine. So I'm going to get hit for 4, but I can take another round of that without getting an injury. <sighs> I think this might be a strategized turn. Although, so if I play strategize... Then I'll be, you know, after I play it, I'll be down to 3 of 5. I'm going to draw 2, 5 of 5. Um, and then at the start of my turn... Oh, I can't remember how we left it. I don't remember if I'm going to draw a card and go to 6 of 5, or if it's not going to allow me to draw. I had intended to change it so that you would still draw a card. I'm just trying to decide if it's worth playing Strategize or not. I think it is, because if nothing else, it's sort of a dead card in my hand, and it might ultimately end up getting me to 6 cards. So, and we need some options. Okay, no, I did not... I did not draw my card at my start of my turn, and I sort of intended to change that. We got a block, though, which is great, because we're not going to take four damage this turn. Actually, we can trip him as well, and... Um, I really want Adrenal Extract something. But I'm, I'm going to go for the trip here. Only does one damage, he's stunned, he doesn't attack, plus I still have the block, which means I have a whole turn, so he's going to hit me for four on his turn. Well, he's not, because he's going to be blocked. No, I have to go for the uh, the damage if I don't want to take an injury, which is kind of sucky. So that was the block. I can cup a T, which is excellent, because if I hadn't cup a T, I was in one endurance, I would have given myself a wound by using my Sharp Claws ability, but now I can swipe for the kill and not do that. I don't like the fact that I'm not going to be able to use the Adrenal Extract, but if I do, it ends my turn. He's going to hit me for four, I'll get another wound. Can't afford to do that. So I'll finish him off. We got a Spike Tail, very similar to the Sharp Claws. Um, swipes at all enemies for two endurance, but this one does a base of three instead of a base of two. I think that's probably worth grabbing. Oh, we get the Undead Ban. This is actually going to be a lot less dangerous than the uh, the Orc Commanders. It's three Necromancers, uh, and obviously they're going to be summoning a lot of Skeletons, but it's it's a low damage output fight. They only do two each. The Skeletons only do one each. It's certainly not as bad. Um, now, what we'd like to do, ideally, is to kill all the Necromancers at the same time. That way we don't give them a chance to summon any Skeletons. So I'm going to start by just chomping at the Necromancer with my Orc Teeth. We took six damage there. Um... Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to headbutt the guy in the middle. Wow. Well, now I wish I'd actually killed one. 
Um, damn. Well, we're going to have to kill one. He's only going to do two damage, and the skeleton won't hit, but I will get another injury here. Oh, no, because one's one's not going to attack. One's going to summon a skeleton instead. Um... I guess I'm going to Angel Wings. Because no matter what, I'm taking an injury. So I'll take the injury from the Angel Wing itself. I got an arrow. Oh, that's supposed to be arrowed knee. And with an apostrophe D, not an apostrophe S, but it doesn't matter. Took an arrow to the knee. Um, and... I guess we'll just... Well, they, he can't attack me regardless this turn. So I guess we'll take this opportunity to just punch down this Necromancer. Now I wish I'd taken those bandages. Actually, this would be a perfect time with a Phoenix Feather. Um, okay, we're going to have to do that. And we'll take slightly less damage, because one will, if will heal is going to summon the Skeleton, and the Skeleton won't take an action on the first turn. We can block, and it's going to block the guy on the left. But I think I'm still going to have to just trip him. Where's my AoEs? Oh, right, when you draw a card, they go into the discard pile, so they haven't regenerated yet. Because that would have been a great time to do it. Still, we will be okay here. We shouldn't take another wound, which is good, because we would lose if we did. Uh, Angel Wings isn't really helpful, but I guess it's at worst neutral, so I'm going to do that to clear some space and then strategize. There we go. Couldn't hit me because of the Angel Wings. I'll cup of tea, not that it matters. There's our spiked tail. Whew! Stink Lance. Stun all enemies for one round. That's really strong. It does cost two endurance, but I think we're going to stitch it on because the orc smash. Those those are three of the commanders. I think I'm going to stay down one level. I'm going to do the orc boss fight instead. Um, and yeah, we'll start with the swipe. It'll get rid of this orc. Then, okay, tripping this guy would be nice. No, 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 no. I hmm. Because if I just kill the Shaman... Okay, actually, no. I will punch the Shaman. I'll take the 4 damage. Because I can just trip him this round so he can't hit me again. And then kill him off. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I kill him if I hit him again. He can't wound me. Right? He's going to hit me for 4. I could kill him now. But I'm going to take this great opportunity to use Adrenal Extract on my Octopus Tentacles. So now my Octopus Tentacles will do 4. And I'll still go and finish off the Orc Commander. That's a permanent change. Bloodhound Nose is great. It is completely free. Quick action, costs nothing, lets you dig through your discard pile for any card. Huge card for us, because it'll let us go and grab something we've already used once. Um, I'm going to go with the Orc Boss Fight again, because I know that the Orc Boss Fight has 0% chance to drop a common item. You'll always get a rare, epic, or legendary. Uh, so we may go and want to do that. Um, we don't have anything to discard pile right now, so I'll just block, and then, I wonder, actually, I wonder if I should just Orc Teeth the Commander, because next turn, I know for sure I could go Bloodhound Nose, Orc Teeth, and get rid of the Commander. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, Orc didn't even attack me, which is great. Oh, and I had a block up, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm going to Bloodhound Nose, I'm going to pick up the Orc Teeth again. And use that to eliminate the commander. Orc's going to hit me. Shaman's going to heal this turn, but he's got nothing to heal. We can cup a T. We can punch out the orc. There we go. And we got lots of time with the orc shaman. Um, I'm going to bring him down to three. Oh, right, four damage. I was actually going to see about buying enough time to do another adrenal extract. I forgot that that was going to do four damage. Another bloodhound nose. I think there's no reason not to grab that. This is actually a bug. You were only ever supposed to see two encounters at one time, but uh, at some point we don't clean up the encounters properly, so you get a list of multiple encounters here. It, two's, I mean, my interface was technically able to handle basically any number of encounters, but I only ever, my, my row of encounters, they're not randomly generated, I set up a list of them, and two was the most options I ever set up in that list because I didn't have time to come up with a more interesting system. This is a bug, but it's actually a good one because you get a lot of variety. And I'm happy this was accidentally left in here because it feels quite good to have such a large selection. Eventually, by the way, there is an end. Eventually, you will get to the dragon, and killing the dragon wins the game. Um, I think... I'm going to do another orc boss fight. 
See, now we got the adrenal glands. Strate oh, wait, this is actually a really bad initial setup. I, I'm going to punch out the orc just to make sure to minimize the damage from him. But I did just take six, which is bad. Um, angel wings, yes. And then I'm just going to throw away the strategize. It's not really... It's only giving me one draw effectively, but still better than just skipping a turn. Okay, he just did his heal. Which puts us... Oh, I'd love to adrenal extract one of these first, but I don't think it's practical. Um, we're going to do this now. Oh, that will get me injured. Because I'm going to take six. Oh, no, this is only two damage. Okay. Well, it's still not great. But I'm not quite dead. <gasps> oh, Stinkland will injure me. Yeah, no matter what, I'm taking injury this turn. Oh, which means I've lost! No! No! I lost! I lost! Like, it doesn't matter. Either I kill myself or they kill me. <laughs> Shit. I don't know... I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign that I still have not beaten the game myself. Other people have. Again, watching that, that stream from El Siren, um, when uh, uh, Court uh, sat down and played for the first time, not knowing how the game works, she won on her first go. And I still have not won the game. Um, there's, there's a big luck element in, in the, uh, the loot, but I think that much, that's part of the fun um, and the, the replayability is, is from that aspect. There you go. You got the block. Excellent. Um, is you know, the it's 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 not necessarily challenging in that it's frustrating from like weird twitchy stuff or whatever, um, but um, like there there's a, I don't know I don't know. Hard shell reduce all damage received by one for one turn. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on that one. It's gonna be something I don't think I want to draw. Um, so yeah, so you are a bit dependent on what you pick up, which could be frustrating. Uh, let's uh, block first. But I think is also kind of fun and replayable. I, I kind of look at this as being like, it's like a non-Twitch-based like Binding of Isaac, right? Because sometimes you get good combos and sometimes you don't. And if you don't get a good combo, it can make the game a little hard. Uh, okay, Sharp Claws I think is great. Um... And I'm going to go for another Orc Patrol here, because I was going to say, oh, if I started with the Sharp Claws, then we would have done a whole heck of a lot of damage. I think it's probably fine if I just start off by, say, doing a trip here, because that will still reduce the incoming damage by two on this turn, same as killing an Orc. But that sends me up nicely to just headbutt the Orc Shaman and take him out of the picture completely. And I got all my punches, and I got lots of endurance, so I'm not worried about blocking or cup and tea, because I know I'm going to finish these guys off. Quills! This is an awesome card. If it's in your hand, now, now this might be a winning run. If it's in your hand, it injures anyone who hits you with melee. So anyone who hits me with a melee attack will take two damage. Plus, I can play it, which will damage all enemies, and it counts as a ranged attack, which doesn't actually matter because none of the enemies are programmed with any thorns attack, but if they were... Okay, that's a powerhouse card. That's a huge powerhouse card. Um, I'm going to start by tripping the Necromancer. So he can't summon a skeleton. Then I'm going to punch him. That will allow him to, to summon a skeleton. But now I can just sharp claws and kill them all at once. Cheetah legs. Awesome. I mean, this does drain your car, your hand pretty quick. But um, oh, this next card costs no endurance, right? It's Cup of Coffee, which is a legendary that makes your next card instant. Like, makes your next card played quick. Cheetah leg makes the next card cost no endurance. Well, we do have some stuff that costs endurance. We do have this, the claws. I think I'm going to stitch it on. There's actually enough stuff like that. Um, we'll play the, the press gang this time for variety. There's my quills. Excellent. So I can punch one. And it's going to attack me and die from the quills. And then on my turn, I can just play the quills, which is even a quick action. This is like a sick OP action. Because I can do that and still have played something. Spike shells. So spike shell is like the quills, but not quite as, as um, insane. Um, well, that's interesting. It doesn't actually show the number here. Because the way I have the, this class, this is a card type um, um, coded internally, it doesn't show that's a one damage ability, which is what this is. Uh, I guess because you can't play this as a damage spell. That's why it doesn't show it by default, right? Um, but it's still, it's more it's more thorns damage, which I think we could sort of combo a whole bunch of that. Orc Patrol over here. So this would be a great example of we can go Cheetah Legs into Sharp Claws, which costs me new endurance. So there we go. And um, we'll just punch out this Orc Shaman. 
tough cranium. So this is a, a better headbutt. It's a four damage headbutt for one, for one endurance. I think that's probably worth adding. Now, every time you add a card, you lower the chance of drawing something else, right? So you got to think about that. Um, I think with this, we start off with the sharp claws, eliminating the orc, although the orc would have killed himself anyway. He still would have done damage to me. And then, oh, this is such a sick run. It's just such a sick run. Medusa's hair. We got our first legendary, you guys. Medusa's hair. It deals damage for three turns. It's three damage for three turns. So this is a nine damage attack that costs no endurance. This is also something really good to buff with Adrenal Extract because it would turn from a nine damage to a 12 damage. It does do it over time. Um, so it's, you know, it, it also, it will do its damage before someone attacks. So you can think of it as a three damage attack that costs no endurance, which is still a really good card. Okay. Triple Orc Commander Fight. This is a really tough one. Um, it always has been, but I guess the way to start would be to cheat a legs into Tough Cranium, and then that guy will actually kill himself with that. He still did his damage. We still took 12 damage right away. Um, Cup of Tea brings me up to 6. And there's no way I'm going to take an injury, no matter what here. Boom. Bonitis. Well, that's that sucks. We'll finish him off. Rabies! Oh my god, we're getting powerhouse cards this time. So Rabies um, is a 10 damage attack that costs no endurance. However, playing this causes you to discard your hand. It's not explicit here, but it will not discard wounds. The wound will still stay in your hand. Um, I could choose to discard a wound instead, which actually I didn't do on the last run. Now, this is not destroy. This is discard a wound. It's really a sketchy usability. I'm going to take the Rabies because, wow, what a powerful killing blow. Um... Do, 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 do. I think the thing to do here is, well, we well, may as well start with the um, the Medusa here. So he'll take three damage before he attacks. It won't kill him, but then he'll die in the next turn. Um, and he's the last person to act, so these guys actually won't summon a skeleton. I may have wanted to do it in a slightly different order. I don't think it matters. I'm going to just trip this guy. So one less source of, act of attacks, and that guy dies before he attacks me. I can block and punch. Spike shell. I'm just going to leave it in hand. Um, I think I'm going to have to punch this guy out anyway. And then I can tough cranium this guy. And then... Block the two damage from there. He's going to hit me for one, but he'll kill himself. And I'm going to strategize to make sure I have other cards in my hand. Oh, right! He summoned another skeleton. I did that wrong. Ah! Um, okay, no, this is good. I can cheat a legs to get an, a headbutt that doesn't cost any endurance, and he'll only hit me for one. And then I can punch him to kill him. Well, I could have killed him with rabies. Leathery Wings. You can't be hit by melee for one turn. It's not a quick action. No, it's only a common card, so I'm going to ditch that one. And again, that just discarded the Bonitas. I can still draw it. Uh, we're going to do the boss fight instead. We got the Quills in this one, which is great. And the Medusa Hair. Well, I think the thing to do is to Medusa Hair, the Orc Commander. It brings him down to one because of the uh, the quills. And actually, if I play out the quills now, it will hit everyone. Boom. Sensitive Nose. Draw three cards at random, then... Or discard three cards at random, and then draw three cards. I can't... I think this can't actually discard a wound. Um, it's not a free action. It's not a quick action, rather. So, I think I'd rather gain plus one to my max endurance here. And let's do the boss fight. Oh, we'd see we redrew the Bonitis. Um, oof. I guess we'll take out the Orc just for a little bit less incoming damage here. I don't like not applying damage to the Orc Commander, but... Okay, that's going to be nice. So there's going to be one tick of heal here, which does mean that the Orc Commander is not going to die in his next attack, which is too bad. Now we can cup a T. I'm thinking of doing a rabies on the orc uh, shaman. Because at least the orc commander is guaranteed to die in two turns, which won't lead me to have an injury. Okay, I'm just going to use rabies on the orc shaman. Yeah, it doesn't discard wounds. And we can punch you. Either way, he was going to die before he died anything. Okay, I'm going to take the adrenal extract. Because I got some cards that would be really nice to combo with that. Um, let's do another boss fight. I think I'm going to start by Tough Cranium, the Orc Shaman. 
and then I'm going to trip the orc commander. And the orc hits me. Oh, he didn't hit me. The quills were going to kill him. Now we got double kill. In fact, if I punch you, both of you guys were going to kill each other. Lovely. Bloodhound knows. I like it. We could get some extra, um, some extra endurance, which wouldn't be bad either, though. Ooh. Ooh, that's, t I really like the Bloodhound nose. Because to be able to, like, pick and choose. It has to only be from the discard pile, so you need stuff in there. But you get to pick what you bring back. It's way more powerful than drawing, and it's quick. This is a really potent... I think we're going to have to take that. Um, especially with the rabies. It opens up the possibility one turns we rabies, and the next turn we draw the um, the Bloodhound nose. Uh, let's do let's do an unbad, uh, undead band over here. Um, just get a block in there. And... Just go ahead and trip to bring down some of the incoming damage a wee bit. I don't think I'm going to Bloodhound Nose yet. Bring this guy down to two. Yep, Cheetah Legs into Sharp Claws. So we will get a Skeleton, of course, but that means this Necromancer doesn't attack, the one we killed doesn't attack, and the Skeleton doesn't. So that's not bad here. We will Cup of Tea, and I guess we'll Bloodhound Nose. And I'm trying to... Oh, ooh. I guess I'll take the Sharp Claws. We still have two Necromancers to damage. We'll um, kill a Skeleton, which will then be resummoned. Medusa here. Well, at least it kills. And we got to go for the Necromancers constantly, obviously. Can't, killing Skeletons doesn't actually advance us. Adrenal Extract doesn't help. We just got to skip a turn here. Also means we're going to get another injury. Oh, no, we didn't, because only one Skeleton attacked. Right. I could play the spike shell to remove reduce all damage I received by one, but that's not going to prevent an injury because he does two. And I guess if I keep the spike shell, at least he'll kill himself. Um, which means I should be able to adrenal extract. Oh, it doesn't work on that. Oh, that's a shame. It doesn't work on the spike shell. It works on the other one, but this doesn't count as an attack. Um, well, we'll punch you out. These guys will just kill themselves. But now we have Gangrene in addition to Bonitis. I like Constricting Tail. It stuns an enemy for two turns. I think it's one of the only effects that stuns something for two turns. See how there's like a weird st stack of stuff over here? That's a sign that that's that bug. I'm going to take this because it's really powerful for shutting down something big. Um, and this will do the boss fight. I keep trying to mix it up a little bit. Uh, I can go Tough Cranium and then punch the commander next turn and kill him. Which I will do. So that should avoid any injuries. Uh, actually, if I do quills, and then use whatever, I can finish off the shaman. Okay. Basilicize. Turns an enemy's stone for three turns. They can't be damaged. It does cost four endurance to use this. But they are stunned for three turns. They are also just immune to damage. Huh. Gives you turn to, like, work out some combos, draw some extra cards. Be quite good against the dragon. And we do have the cheetah legs to combo uh, to ignore the four endurance costs, so I guess I'm going to take it. Could have discarded a wound, but again, it'll come back at some point. Um, boss fight. Huh. I think I'm just going to Spike Shell end my turn. I realize it means we're not going to be reflecting any damage. Uh, cup of Tea. And then I'll use Rabies on the Orc Commander. Take him out of the picture. Oh, we took no damage this turn. Nice. Medusa Hair, I guess I'll use that on the Shaman. Guaranteed to kill him in two turns. And I guess we'll just strategize for our action. And we'll just go and punch out the orc. Chameleon Icker. Play to turn this card into a copy of any card in your hand. The card will turn back into Chameleon Icker after use. So, I'm really happy with our card variety. I, the, the monster encounters are a little repetitive, and that sucks. But we have a lot of cards, and they're really interesting. And you will not see them all on any given run. I think the Chameleon Icker is probably worth taking. It's a quick action. 
There's the dragon, the final boss. We could go and farm an orc smash first, but I'm going to go for the dragon instead. So the dragon has 50 hit points and deals 5 points of damage on an attack. Luckily, the block is particularly good against that, and actually, having stuns is quite good at shutting him down. So he was stunned. We still have our block effect, which is great. Um, I'm wondering about taking this opportunity to do an adrenal extract. on a punch. I think it's too late to be farming Adrenal Extract. I think it's better off just to punch. Oh, he did a Tail Swipe, but it actually discards a card at random from your hand, and he discarded my Adrenal. I guess that's fine. Uh, quills, I think we're going to keep the Quills in our hand and hope that he beats himself up a little bit, and which means I've got nothing to do this turn but to skip a turn. We still have a block. Oh, that's good. So the Swipe, that's interesting. The Swipe didn't do damage. It just discarded a card. Deep Breath means... Uh, he doesn't attack this turn, but in the next turn he's going to do double damage. Which means, you're still averaging 5 damage on every turn, but you can block. We're actually going to be blocking his 10 damage fire breath here, which is going to be fantastic. So I'll just punch him. Double damage, but we didn't take it. Which is good, because one injury, and it's GG. Um, I guess we'll whack him with Tough Cranium. At least he's taking 2 back from the Quills. Oh, I need to take the Basilisk guys. Do I wait until I've got cheetah legs? Well, I guess sort of kind of makes no difference if I skip the turn now or not. There's a cheetah legs. Good. Cheetah legs into Basil's eyes. So he's stoned for three turns. He can't do anything. I can't damage him. Um, I'm going to use the chameleon icker to clone the quills. So I have double quills in my hand now. So if he does hit me, he's going to be taking four. And they're both quick actions, which is a good way to finish things off. Um, now unfortunately, I can't hit him right now because he's still stoned. So we're just going to skip a turn. That was his last one. I didn't draw a card there, which is too bad. But I'm going to headbutt him. And then I'm going to, I'm going to die. Because he's going to hit me for five, which, and if I use the headbutt, it's going to be bringing me down to five. So I think I've got to use a quills just to make room in my hand for something else. Oh, he took a deep breath. <gasps> So I'm going to be hit for 10. There's nothing I can do. I can try to unload. Bring down to 30, but that's the third wound. Well, there you go. I, I hope I hope you guys follow the link down below and play the game. Give me some feedback. Um, let me know what you think. I am actually very happy with this game. We did run out of time for a few visuals and certainly the sound and, again, the monster variation. But I think it's a very challenging game. And if you're like me you're sort of going to feel like you have to play it until you win it. And to a certain extent, it's going to be luck. To a certain extent, it is going to be luck, what you can get. Um, and I wouldn't mind... I'm not going to do, like, a full, you know... I'm not going to, you know, work on this forever to make it into a full game. I'm going to skip this one this time. Uh, no, you know, it was pretty handy last time. But um, I'm very tempted to go and make some sort of post-comp version of this that... Um, that maybe, you know, has more monster variety. Because that's really the only thing missing. You know, maybe, you know, some of the cards are in balance, but that's part of the fun. Yeah, I like that. I think the spike tail is good. And do the press gang here. Uh, we'll block punch. And actually, if we can get the spike tail, it'd be a good way to finish these guys off. I'm trying to decide how we should work it here. It's probably better just knock down the damn. I gotta stop playing. It's so like, I think of it as a good sign that I myself am like, I kind of want to keep playing and, and see if I could beat this. Cup of tea, cheat legs into a free headbutt. There we go. We should be fine now, as long as we draw damage. Uh, that's not enough to kill, and it does cost endurance. I'm just going to use the opportunity to strategize here into a trip, which buys me an extra turn, into a block plus punch, into yet another punch. Stink land, stun all enemies for one round. We'll try it. We didn't use it last time. Uh, cheetah legs into head... Oh, no! I meant to headbutt the Necromancer. Oops, that was a horrible waste. Stun you so you can't summon another dude. Uh, that's only going to block skeleton damage. So I'm going to punch this Necromancer instead. Okay, now it doesn't matter one way or another. Because um, we're going to kill the Necromancer. Cup of tea. I'll block one of these. The so block only saved one point of damage, but it's not too bad. Oops, strategize. I wonder if Stinkland should be a quick action. 
It's epic. It probably should be, actually, now that I think about it. That should probably be quick and still cost endurance. Either it should be no endurance, it just buys you a turn, or... Oh, the scalpel is cool. It's an attack that is quick. So it's a, it does take one endurance, but it's a quick action. Um, and it's a great way to add that extra point of damage you need to, to finish things off here. Um, punch. Oh my god, I gotta stop. I'm gonna trip the Necromancer. No, there's a 55th chance he doesn't even hit. Oh, all right, I had the block, so it doesn't matter. Um, and we'll punch him, so we'll get the skeleton this time. We can kill him next time, no matter what. Which we're gonna do. I guess I'll just headbutt you, because it's fine. And cheetah legs the scalpel. I could have cheetah legs the, the headbutt too. Uh, cup of tea. Strategize. There you go. Punch. Phoenix feather. Destroy all wound cards in your hand. Destroyed after use. I think I think maybe some of the anti wound stuff has got to be buffed or do something else. You know what this should have been? Okay, there's a vampire teeth attack that is quite cool. Um, it's a zero cost, two damage attack that actually gives you endurance equal to the damage it dealt. I think there should have been maybe like an attack card or something that does something and maybe. Either it, it does something useful and and discards a wound, or, yeah, I mean, at least this is quick, but you can't reuse it. I don't know. Having one of those would have let us win the game last time. I may have, like, you know, screwed myself there. So we don't need the physics, the, the Phoenix Feather now, so I can just... Oh, it's destroyed after use, even if it doesn't destroy anything, so I can't actually just play it to get rid of it in my hand, either. Hmm. See, I mean, there's still some balance stuff. I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty clear, but... I don't know. I'm really happy with this game. All right, we're going to wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching, folks. If you follow the links down below, you can play my game. See you next time. Bye-bye.